In this video, we'll be discussing the break and retest of support and resistance using trend lines and price action. Understanding this trading strategy well can make it one of the most powerful and consistently profitable trading strategies. Moreover, this trading strategy can be applied across all trading platforms, assets, and timeframes. You can utilize this trading strategy without the need for additional indicators. In this video, we'll cover the break and retest trading strategy using trend lines and price action comprehensively from start to finish. Therefore, make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video. And don't forget to support us by liking and subscribing to this channel. The discussion on trading strategy using the break and retest technique for support and resistance using trend lines and price action will be divided into three parts, including, 1, break and retest support resistance on a single time frame, 2, break and retest support resistance on multiple time frames, 3, confirmation of break and retest support resistance on multiple time frames. We will divide this topic into three separate parts. And now, let's start with the first part. In this first part, we will discuss the break and retest strategy for support and resistance using a single time frame. If you typically use support and resistance with the conventional model, you can also use support and resistance with trend lines. In fact, the working principle and usage of support and resistance with both models are almost the same. The only difference is that when using trend lines, you can avoid sideways markets. And this will help minimize the possibility of getting trapped in such sideways markets. A trend line is one of the commonly used technical analysis tools in Forex, crypto, or gold markets. It appears as a line drawn on the chart to identify the direction of market movement. There are two types of trend lines we'll discuss today, bullish or uptrend and bearish or downtrend. Let's start with the bullish trend line, uptrend. When the trend line shows a bullish movement, you typically use the trend line as support. Conversely, in a bearish or downtrend movement, you generally use the trend line as resistance. Drawing a trend line is relatively straightforward, but you need to understand the market structure before drawing one. For example, here's a market structure illustrating bullish and bearish movements. In a bullish movement, you can connect two nearby low points and higher low points using a trend line. In this bullish movement, the trend line functions as support. At this point, you'll focus on identifying potential by entry points when the candlestick price approaches the support trend line. On the other hand, in a bearish movement, you can connect two nearby high points and lower high points using a trend line. In this bearish movement, the trend line functions as resistance. At this point, you'll focus on identifying potential sell entry points when the candlestick price approaches the resistance trend line. If a trend line is broken by the price, the trend line will change. However, there are several conditions that must be met to determine that a trend will change, for example, suppose in a bullish movement, we draw a bullish trend line by connecting low point and higher low points. But when the price breaks out of the support trend line, you must identify the breakout that occurs. If the breakout fails to surpass the previous low point, then it is a false breakout. And you can draw a new trend line that still maintains the bullish trend line position. Now, let's see how to apply these trend lines directly on the chart. Currently, we identify a bullish trend movement, where the price candlesticks form low points and higher low points. In this scenario, you can draw a trend line connecting the low points and higher low points. However, if later the price candlesticks break out of the trend line, and upon proper identification, it's a false breakout. This occurs because the subsequent points fail to form a new low, in such a position, we can then draw a new trend line from the low point to the lower high point. Now, let's consider an example within a bearish trend movement. 
In a bearish movement, we observe a structure of higher highs and lower highs. In this context, we draw a trend line connecting the high points and lower high points. If later the price breaks out of the resistance trend line, we can first identify the breakout. And upon identification, it's a false breakout, it's because the price candlesticks fail to form a new higher high point. In this scenario, we can draw a new trend line connecting the high point to the lower high point. The same approach can be applied to all time frames, but for better probability, we recommend using this method with a minimum time frame of 1 hour. Additionally, you can also draw double channel trend lines to be used as support or resistance, as target take profit areas, and for trend change identification. In a bullish trend movement, you can draw a trend line connecting high points to higher high points. And in a bearish trend movement, you can draw a trend line connecting low points to lower low points. Now, let's discuss how to place buy and sell orders using this trading strategy. In this method, we will use candlestick price action patterns to place orders in the market. You can use candlestick patterns such as doji, engulfing, and other reversal candlestick patterns to place orders. A. Placing orders using support resistance with trend lines and price action candlesticks. Here's how to place buy orders. 1. In a bullish movement, draw a trend line connecting the low points and higher low points. 2. Wait for the price candlesticks to return to the support area. 3. Wait for a reversal candlestick pattern to appear. 4. Once the reversal candlestick pattern appears, place the order after the completion of the reversal candlestick pattern. Five, set the stop loss at the latest swing low, six. Target the take profit using a risk reward ratio of one to 1.5 for TP1 and a risk reward ratio of one to two for TP2. And here's how to place sell orders. One, in a bearish movement, draw a trend line connecting the high points and lower high points. 2. Wait for the price candlesticks to return to the resistance area. 3. Wait for a reversal candlestick pattern to appear. 4. Once the reversal candlestick pattern appears, place the order after the completion of the reversal candlestick pattern. Five. Set the stop loss at the latest swing high. 6. Target the take profit using a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1.5 for TP1 and a risk reward ratio of 1 to 2 for TP2. B. Placing orders using break and retest support resistance with trend lines and price action candlesticks. Now, let's discuss the second method using this trading strategy. In this second method, we will utilize the break and retest approach. After a breakout occurs, you wait for the price candlesticks to retest before placing an order. Example, in a bullish or uptrend movement, draw a bullish trend line connecting the low points and higher low points. Then, if the price breaks out of the trend line, validate whether it's a valid breakout. You can confirm this if the price candlesticks surpass the previous low point. In this position, you wait for the price to retest the trend line that was previously broken. Now, let's look at an example in a bearish trend. In a valid bearish trend movement, you'll observe high and lower high points. Draw a trend line connecting the high points and lower high points. If the price experiences a valid breakout, meaning it surpasses the previous high point, you wait for a retest of the trend line that was previously broken by the price. Now, 
let's discuss how to place buy and sell orders using this break and retest method. Here's how to place buy orders, 1, in a bearish movement, draw a trend line connecting the high points and lower high points, 2, if the price then breaks out of the trend line, ensure that the breakout is valid, 3, once you've confirmed that the breakout is valid, wait for the price candlesticks to retest the area of the trend line that was previously broken, 4, once the retest occurs, ensure that a reversal candlestick pattern forms, 5, if all conditions are met, you can place a buy order. After the completion of the reversal candlestick pattern, Six. Set the stop loss at the latest swing low, 7. Target the take profit using a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1.5 for TP1 and a risk reward ratio of 1 to 2 for TP2. 8. Here's how to place sell orders, 1. In a bullish movement, Draw a trend line connecting the low points and higher low points. 2. If the price then breaks out of the trend line, ensure that the breakout is valid. 3. Once you've confirmed that the breakout is valid, wait for the price candlesticks to retest the area of the trend line that was previously broken. 4. Once the retest occurs, ensure that a reversal candlestick pattern forms. 5. If all conditions are met, you can place a sell order. After the completion of the reversal candlestick pattern, 6. Set the stop loss at the latest swing high, 7. Target the take profit using a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1.5 for TP1 and a risk reward ratio of 1 to 2 for TP2. 8. As previously discussed, you can also utilize double channel trend lines to place take profit extensions. In a bullish trend movement, you can set the take profit target at the resistance area. Similarly, in a bearish trend movement, you can also place the take profit area at the support zone. However, if you still find difficulty in placing entries, you can combine this trading strategy with the stochastic oscillator indicator. Go to the indicator search tab, then type stochastic oscillator. Simply select the default stochastic oscillator from trading view, then, access the Stochastic Oscillator Indicator settings. Under the Input tab, change the percent %K length to 10. Also, adjust the percent %K smoothing to 3 and the percent %D smoothing to 3. Once done, click OK to confirm the changes. Don't forget to click and subscribe if you find this video helpful, that concludes our discussion for Part 1. We'll cover the next topic in the following part.